It was apparent that we needed a different endotracheal tube. I instinctively took control over the airway and began preparations to place a larger tube to better secure the airway. His oxygen level was rapidly dropping, and we had to act. In trauma, the airway takes precedence over all and is the first step in managing critical cases. As I looked into the back of the throat with a laryngoscope, I was met with an angry pool of blood. With some difficulty, I was able to visualize a sliver of the epiglottis and see the leaking endotracheal tube's location. I gave my paramedic nurse the nod to pull the tube, and I deftly slid the larger tube in to secure the airway, falling along the path of the old tube as it was pulled out from his lungs. My sense of accomplishment and relief at completing this vital task was short-lived. We began the process of transferring the child to our stretcher when he flatlined. The local ER physician began to vigorously pump his chest, trying to usher life back into his fragile little body. Statistics show, unfortunately, that any person who suffers cardiac arrest due to trauma has a very poor outcome. This case was no different. But all healthcare providers I had trained under always give children the extra benefit of a doubt. These little souls have not yet lived or experienced the joys of life, and terminating resuscitation efforts in any child is a difficult decision. Even if all the evidence supports that the case is futile, we continue to throw all the technology, medication, knowledge, skill, passion into the arena, hoping that there will be some positive response. Letting hope take precedence over science and any statistic, even if just for a fleeting moment. All we ask is just some small glimmer of hope or even the slightest hint of response showing that we could bring this child back from death. After what seemed like an eternity, we all knew it was time to stop the resuscitation efforts. We had lost. Time stood still, and the final act was rapidly drawing to a close. I asked the social worker to escort in the grandparents. We had been alerted to their presence only moments before, and sensed they would want to be here at the bedside. I stepped away from the head of the bed, as did many of the other staff with the exception of the physician who was still performing chest compressions and the respiratory therapist who was pushing oxygen into this child's tiny lungs with a bag valve mask. The efforts of our team had failed. The family crowded around the bedside, each taking the hand, a hand of the child, and gently stroking his face. But among all the outpouring love, tenderness, and grief, it's the the father's final words I will always remember. As we stopped resuscitation efforts, he whispered, My big boy, I'll always love you, forever. And with that, he leaned down and kissed his child goodbye. That is One Little Shoe or Big Boy, a chapter in my book, 50 Flights of Physicians Coming of Age. All the stories are true, just chronicles. My time as a flight physician, my passion for helping patients through difficult times, This was a challenging case, like all cases involving children, particularly children who do not survive. And my purpose of writing the book was just to share a little bit about the emotion and the passion that goes on behind the scenes. I mean, you've all seen the TV shows and the movies and things like that. And it's easy to get wrapped up in the excitement and the drama. But in the end, there is a heavy weight to bear. The loss of a life, the loss of a child the failed attempts despite decades of training and decades of practice. I've been practicing medicine and I started in the emergency medicine arena back in college when I worked on an ambulance. I've been doing this for 25 years and it never gets any easier. And so I wanted to share some of that in the book. Not all the chapters are, some of the chapters are humorous, but I wanted to take you along for a flight, along for a ride, what it's like to work in the high-paced, high-pressure environment of trauma and critical care. So that wraps up this episode of Project 29, episode 29 of the Project U podcast. You can find some more details on the blog at Mitchell MD. As always, go to iTunes and I would just love a review. And if you're looking for more content and health related information, come back next week. We'll be back to the regular format where I'm diving into longevity, functional medicine, how to optimize your body, your mind, your spirit to achieve that Zen like balance of becoming the perfect human being. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Project U. Head over to iTunes and leave a review or join the conversation on the blog at MitchellMD.com. Have a great week.